you might want to give some of the tips and tricks that I share in this video a try. Hi, I'm Creative Katie Karen Birchall. Welcome to my channel. So I'm going to be working with this lovely napkin. I'm going to turn this into this. So this napkin is called Budgie's Couple and it comes from ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link in the description box and a coupon code. It's beautiful, soft pastel colors, but in order to maximize its use, I need to release it from the napkin. I want to cut out the elements and then that allows me to play with the composition and get a better idea of what I can do with it. And it makes you think of it more as a focal image or elements of your page rather than as a napkin. So don't be afraid to cut it apart and play with it. Now I've got the colors near those budgies and we've got that teal and there's a little bit of purple. And so I'm grabbing some collage papers. I'm determined to use up my stash. And then for good measure, I'm going to use some book paper. This is dictionary paper that I have. And that's a great way. You don't need a stamp or a stencil with text on it. You can use book paper. Different fonts are going to give a different kind of feel. And it's great for pattern and for texture. Now, whenever I use collage papers like this, I'm never quite sure where the page is going to lead, how much of that is actually going to show. But I do know that basically it's going to inform my color choice and it's going to add some amazing texture. Once I have a rough idea of where, how everything fits and how much I need, I'm just using my fluid matte medium and gluing it down. Now in the bottom left hand corner, I plan on gluing that napkin down. So I'm not going to put any text or really any collage paper underneath that area. I'm trying to avoid that area. And I'm just layering up these teal and purple collage papers. With mixed media and art journaling, you don't have to throw anything away. So all these little bits that you have can go on there. They can be put on, add some texture and be completely painted over, or they could be used. Now there's a lot of yellow kind of in that budgie. And I thought I wanna add yellow to my background. But instead of grabbing paint, I grabbed a leftovers of a napkin that I'm working on on another project. And I decided I'm going to glue that down. Now, the difference here is this is also going to add more texture because the um, napkin, it just adds texture as well as this color. So just filling in the white areas. And this background right now is really reminding me of Easter pastel colors. Not my usual selection of colors. I usually go a little bolder and brighter, but definite Easter egg-ish colors or Easter colors. And I guess, you know, Easter is coming around the corner. So I might want to use these colors on another page. So once that's all glued down, I'm going to let that sit and dry. And I'm going to move on to working with the napkin. Now, the napkin is usually three-ply. You want to pull off the two excess plies. Being careful, you can see my napkin ripped a little bit, but I'm not too worried because I'm going to glue it down and nothing bad is going to happen. And then I'm going to use my liner brush with a little bit of water and I'm going to water cut the excess out. I like to get as close as I can. Now, this napkin is really difficult because there's those fronds. It's not a simple cutout. So I'm just going to get out as much as I can especially around the top. And I'll deal with the other parts later. And that's going to go right in the corner. Now I didn't put any color underneath here because I don't want those colors to distort my focal image. Once I have it in position, I'm just going to use some fluid matte medium, put a coat underneath. I do half at a time, flip it over, being gentle not to rip my napkin because it gets, once it gets wet, it gets very fragile. Right now, I must admit, I am thinking that 
I'm not exactly happy with this, but it all works out. I grab some gesso and underneath that one budgie's head, I don't want that yellow to come through. So I'm just putting a coat of gesso. This is an easy way of whiting out what's underneath there so that your focal image, if it's a napkin, doesn't get discolored. I give that a dry and then once everything's in place, I'm going to fold back the other half of this napkin and glue it down. If I had color on the whole background, I could just white out the area where I'm going to glue that napkin down and that would have solved the problem on the whole. Because sometimes you make the background first and you don't know what focal image. Now I'm taking some yellow and I'm painting in a little bit around the budgies. Cutting off the excess once that's completely dry. This is an important step to do right now because as soon as you cut this out, it looks a little bit more finished and it may guide the next step. Now I'm going back to working with the background. I want to meld those colors a little bit more. So I'm grabbing some white gesso on my finger, just adding. This softens the edges, makes everything a little more working together. I'm also getting rid of some of the yellow. I realized at this point that there's way too much yellow. I don't, I, I don't want that to be the main color. This softens the background. Remember, I want the focal image to be most up front. Adding a little bit of gesso around the budgies as well, stopping to give it a good dry. I want these colors now to be a little bolder, so I'm coming in with a little bit of dioxazine purple and the teal. But I'm just putting that on. So. The collage papers right now, you might be thinking, well, you're not really seeing them. No, that color choices of the collage papers and the texture are still there. I'm still going to be using basically that purple and teal. And the amazing texture comes out of that. This stencil is called Tropical Fronds, and I am going to stencil through it with white acrylic paint. And I chose this stencil because it kind of mirrors the fronds that are around the budgies. So again, I'm taking my inspiration from the napkin and then looking at my stencils or stamps, what goes together, what looks like it should go together. Now I could have done this with modeling paste and that would have added more texture, but I like the simplicity of this. So it's knocking back some of those bright colors, but you still see that fronds hinted away. And more than anything, it's tying in with the focal image. Now I'm adding a little yellow around where that napkin was. Remember, I kept that completely white and it looked kind of funny because it didn't go with the background. So I'm just adding a little bit of yellow in there just to make it all work. And get rid of the white. I decided I love the fronds the way they were, but I decided I'm going to go all the way up that right side. Really expand my focal image. I like the subtlety of stenciling with white. Now I'm going to paint out those fronds and I'm putting a little bit of gesso and then I'm coming in with teal, which is the color they are just to bring them out. Remember, I want that focal image to stand out the most. So I need to brighten it up a little bit because we've got a fairly colorful background. So either I need to brighten up the focal image or dull down the background. And actually, I do both. 
I grabbed some gesso and some uh, paint that I've made into that coral color and I'm over painting the flowers on this on the napkin. Remember, you don't have to leave it exactly as it is. You can always tweak the colors or change them if you want to make everything work properly. I like the color there, that coral coming out. It really looks good and starts my brain thinking on what else I can do to make everything tie together. So I actually ended up taking a break. And the next day I come back and I decide that the background above the birds is just too strong. So my solution, I'm getting some gesso, thinning it down, and I'm basically whitewashing that background. I want the budgies to stand out. That background needs to get knocked back. So you can still see the purple and teal, but it brings out the fronds a little bit more. Then I grab my stencils and there's a couple stencils that I have, a little flower motif that resembled what I had on that napkin. So I'm just laying it where the napkin is and stenciling in a coral color. And instantly at this point, the brightness of that coral color, I just really like it. It's adding that contrast so when in doubt, you might need to add contrast to your page, something that's a little bit brighter. And I'm loving this so much that I decide to continue stenciling where I stenciled the white fronds earlier. So between the two sizes, I'm just going to add flowers going up the right-hand side as well. And this is going to tie the entire page together. And I just love the brightness of these flowers. They just really added so much. Now, I could have just painted them their five petal, four petal flower. I could have just done it freehand. But if you don't want to or don't think you have the skill, look at your stencils, find a little motif somewhere in some stencil and do what I'm doing right now, stenciling it in. Now I wanted to brighten the budgie, so I'm grabbing some blues, mixing it with gesso, and just making this budgie a little brighter. I want him to stand out. And then I'm going to do the same with the second budgie. At the end, I'm going to show the napkin with the finished page and you'll see how different they look and how I'm using what was there as the jumping off point. And right now, hopefully you agree with me that the budgies are standing out a whole lot more. And with the flowers, you really do see the focal image now, whereas you didn't earlier on. The budgies, the napkin part was really getting lost on the page. Just adding a little bit of whiteness and brightness around the, the budgies, just so, to make them stand out more. And then I'm over painting the flowers that I stenciled. I want them to look a little more painterly, a little less just stenciled. And so I'm putting gesso and that coral color and just painting it in so that it does look more painterly. Grab a stylus with some black acrylic paint and I'm just adding some dots to the inside of the flowers. This is adding contrast and adds a lot of interest, I think. I 
And while I'm doing this, I'm thinking, okay, I've got that background behind the budgie's head. Is it done? Is that where I want to leave it? Or do I need or want to do something more there? Does it need something else? Decide I'm going to shade the budgie with black acrylic paint and my angle brush. I'm shading some of the flowers as well. And then shading, edging around the page as well. I decide that I want to add a little more pattern, more subtle pattern to the background. I grabbed this Songs of the Sea texture. It just kind of reminded me a little bit shape of the, like the petals on the flower. And I'm adding a little bit of just black archival ink. It's just adding a little bit more interest to that background. I like that, but I grab my dot stamp and I'm going to add some of that pink from the flowers into the background. It's like the flowers are further off in the distance. And then I put some white paint on this as well and stamp on that. So there are lots of layers and you know your success in mixed media and art journaling when you have lots of layers of interest. This is my Winged Wonders sentiment pack and I grab out three sentiments trying to decide which one after playing around with it as you see trying it here trying it there which one do I like best. I decide to not make a decision and I'm going to add a little more white stenciling with that fronds just to tie it all in. And then I make a final decision about the sentiments and I end up using three sentiments. There's no rule saying you have to only use one. There's no rule saying you have to use any. I like putting sentiments on there. That's part of doing the art for me. Glue this down with my fluid matte medium. And then I'm just going to outline it with my black Posca pen. My Posca pen's almost run dry, so it's having a little bit of an issue with it. And then put some sketchy lines around the border I don't try to make it straight perfectly straight because you can't do it but if you go for sketchy it's a win and there is the finished page I did have my doubts in some moments, but I do love the texture. There's the napkin. See how pale they are and how much brighter they are by overpainting? You can do it too. Loving the texture. The flowers, such a good addition. So take a leap. Wing it. Try something new. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, go get creative.